Every single person in this room has chosen to be here because they want to learn and they want to be better. Is that true? Yes. I've also been told that there are a lot of people in this room today that are going to be sharing their experiences with each other. And I want you to remember one key thing. It's not just who is standing on this stage today that is going to be teaching you something because we always learn from each other. From the oldest person to the youngest child, we're always learning. Do we agree? All right. So typically I give speeches that are usually around an hour long. They told me I only have 18 minutes. So I'm going to try my best to tell you all about I Love Qatar, what I've done, how I achieved it, how I ended up turning it into one of the biggest networks in the country, and how I became a YouTuber. So let's start off with my story really quick. I'm not going to go too far back, but since the theme is all about inhibitions, I was always told in my life that something that I thought of was not going to work. I remember when I first started with I Love Qatar, somebody said to me, there are a million other websites out there. How do you think that you're going to be doing something that's different and special? And I really started to doubt myself as I started to build the platform and the website that I was working on. I went into these business meeting rooms where I had all these different businessmen sitting on a table and I told them I wanted to create something that would not only change the country or help develop the country, but I wanted to use my profit to support charitable causes and the community. Because the more you help the community, the more, of course, society can grow and develop, the more they'll visit your website. And, of course, it's a nice, you know, beautiful circle. I was told at that point, you have to decide, are you a charity or are you a business? So, again, I was put into a situation where I had to decide, I had to think, am I a charity, am I a business? Until all of a sudden, it clicked. Why do I have to decide? Who says? And so that's when I decided that I was going to do whatever I wanted, and if people didn't like it, too bad. But hopefully, I would try to do something very special. This is how I got to 5 million subscribers and followers. It all starts with a very simple idea. An idea is powerless if it stays inside you. How many times have you been in the situation where you've had this really great thought, and you said, I don't want to tell anyone because they might steal it? Yeah, a lot of you. How many of you have said, or actually thought, why did somebody manage to steal your idea and do something? Now, my logic is, if somebody took your idea and they went forward with it, it means one thing. You were too slow. You were sitting there thinking about it so much that you didn't bring it to life. And that's why we have lots of different visionaries that share different thoughts. You have a lot of companies. Let me... Can I get a volunteer real quick? It's real quick. It's just one person. All right. Okay, I'll have you for just a second. If you can come just closer to the stage for just a moment. I want you to try and touch me. Nope, you touched me. Try and... Nope, you touched me. Try... Nope, you touched me. Try and touch me. Try and touch me. Right? It's impossible. You're never ever going to touch me if you try. Thank you so much for that opportunity. That's why Nike says, just do it. They don't say, just try it. Now, I know we're taught at a young age that it's okay. You know, you should just give it a go and just try. I'm, gonna try, I'm telling you, stop trying and start doing. This is an amazing visionary person. I respect this individual. This is a quote that he says. Your time is limited. Don't waste it living someone else's. There are many times in life where you're going to get into a fork in the road, where you're pursuing a career that sadly is something that you were not interested in doing. You're going to have to decide, do you continue on that path or do you go and do something that you love doing? When I graduated from high school, I turned to my dad and I said, and actually my dad at the time, he said to me, Khalifa, what do you want to do? I said, Dad, I want to be the first Qatari actor in Hollywood. That's when he looked at me with a nice, warm smile, put his hand on my shoulder and said to me, Khalifa, you're stupid. <laughs> of course, just like most families, he wanted me to be, go and do something managerial, become a doctor. I decided I was going to become a lawyer. Why? 
because that was the closest thing to acting. I had to stand in front of a jury and I had to act and plead my case and hopefully I could convince them. So I still tried to squeeze in something that I was interested in doing. Then I ended up working for a bank. Now I loved my experience, I loved everything that I was doing there, but who knows this person that's on the screen? It's PewDiePie. But then I learned something and this is something that PewDiePie also said. He learned it too. Life's too short to spend it on things that you hate. Spend it on things that you love. I know you're going to get to a point in your life where you have to decide whether you are going to do something that you're passionate about or whether you want to go ahead and do something that will make other people happy. But they'll be happy if you're happy. Who knows who this person is? Our Amir someone that we love and admire. And this is a quote that he had said recently. We are a people that adhere to our principles and values. We do not live on the margins of life. We do not go wandering about without a destination. Know what it is that you want to do. Don't live your life spending it doing what other people want you to do. And don't live your life aimless as well. Have a goal, have a focus. But what if people don't understand the idea that you're trying to come up with? My father didn't support me when I created Isle of Qatar. I would sit in my little computer trying to program whatever I could, and he would always walk by and go, Computer! As usual, sitting on the computer. He couldn't understand what it is that I was trying to do. And I said, Dad, no, this is going to change the country. It's going to do something really great for Qatar. He couldn't understand. So... I learned this at some part in my life. It's not about changing what you say, it's changing how you say it. So I'm going to show you something really quick. This is something really beautiful. It's called the Insights Discovery Profile. You can go onto their website. You can actually learn some stuff from them as well. But you can try to codify people based on different colors. So what is somebody that is a cool blue? A person that is blue typically is more analytical. This is the type of individual that will probably end up in a company working for, I don't know, the finance department or the legal department. These people love the facts. How many people, by show of hands, think that they're a blue? Then you've got the fiery reds. Red people are typically people who like to make decisions that are going to benefit the whole, but they don't want to spend too much time. They go with their gut. These are people who typically end up in executive positions, like CEOs. How many people feel that they're red. Then you've got the greens. Green people, they are really chill. They love to feel. That's why these are the type of people when you wake up in the morning, they'll come up to you. They won't ask you, how are you doing? They'll say, how are you feeling today? These are people who end up working in organizations such as, I don't know, uh, let's say um, uh, in therapeutic positions. Maybe they're working in HR. Maybe they're counselors. These are people who are very empathetic. Then you've got the sunshine yellows. These people are super passionate. These people don't have time. They go on to tell me, what do you want to do? We've got to do one, two, three, four, and after we're done, we're going to go and party. I'm a yellow. Show of hands, who's a yellow? Show of hands, who's a green? Now, the beauty of whenever you're doing anything in your life is that you have to find a mix of, this color, of these colors. Because when you're working on a project, typically what we do is we end up trying to find people who are similar to us and we try to work with them, right? What I'm telling you is one of the most successful projects always need to have the full color, color spectrum. So it's not about changing what you say, it's changing what, how you say it. Let me give you a quick example. If I was going to go to a blue and I wanted to sell them this clicker over here, I would probably say, you know what, if we buy this clicker, we'll be able to actually uh, increase productivity by 34% and it will encourage individuals you know, to actually create more presentations and thus we can do more and make more people happy. What do you think? I like those numbers. You probably go to a red and you say, hey, Mr. Red, I want to sell this. This is super awesome. It's going to make a lot of profit and we're going to definitely benefit. What do you think? <laughs> I like that. You're going to go to a green and you're going to say, listen, I feel that if we go ahead and choose something like this, it'll make people much happier. It'll make life easier. I like that. You go to a yellow, you tell the yellow, listen, this is super awesome. Let's just get this over and done with. Let's go have some fun. 
<laughs> I like that. At the same, did I change my core subject? No, I'm trying to sell this. But I've changed the way that I say it. And once you start to identify the type of people that are around you, and you identify what colors they are, you realize that you just need to try to appeal to them. But what if they don't understand? Don't say it, show it. My father couldn't understand what I was talking about, but today you go and talk to him. He is the proudest man in the world because I did what I wanted to do and I showed him. I let him see something that was tangible, physical, was visible, and now he believes in it. How do you explain this? This is Hamid Ammar. He's my partner. He's in a show called Q-Tips. If you haven't seen it, please do go ahead and watch it. It's all about cultural, uh, uh, teaching culture in a very simple and fun way. How do you think Hamid would have went to his dad and said, Dad, I want to go get on a camel and go to Burger King. But you know what? The reason why he did this was to showcase how one, we're a very fun society, and it got millions and millions of views. And everybody said, wow, look at the people in Qatar. They're so fun. Sometimes you just have to do it so that you can explain it. Some things are unexplainable. So how big is the network today? So of course, you've got all of these different brands that have existed. And again, this is a company that I was told would never work and was never going to grow. We have lots of different companies that have started to become part of our network. But let's talk about some quick facts. This is me trying to sell you on why you need to go digital. Two-thirds of, uh, two of the world's population is on a social network. People visit social sites more than they check their email. People spend over 28% of all of their time on the internet just visiting a social network, up from 15% just a few years ago. It would take 500 years for you to watch every single video on YouTube. There are over 150 billion shares on Facebook a day. Three years ago, there were 3.5 billion photos on Flickr. Qatar and South Korea are tied at the number one spot for online penetration and average data speeds. We're talking mobile data. So how did I do it? This is less of the theoretical and more of the practical. Whenever I watch a presentation, I don't want to hear just ideas. I want to actually tell me, how, how, how should I do this? Decide on what channels you need to be on. Don't try to be on everything because you can't do everything. It's simple. Try to find other people in other color spectrums that are doing other projects and try to pair yourself with them. Because there are going to be a lot of occasions where you're trying to fight those inhibitions. You're trying to fight the, 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 that, that inner demon that is within you that is telling you that you can't do it. And maybe you can't. And that's okay. That's why you need to fight someone who can and work with them. Make sure you've got the same usernames available. I use name check, by the way, in case you're searching if you want to go on social. Build your team. This goes back to what I was saying. You must have a, a one in-house resource. Use an agency for support if you're trying to do a business that you're interested in. And don't let your content or your accounts go stale. You can schedule content too. So here are some quotes and lessons that I live by. Who's heard this one? A wise man learns from his mistakes. Show of hands. This is what I live by. A wiser man learns from others' mistakes. Take the time to always see what's going on around you so you can learn from other people because that's, how, that's what's going to help you to, again, fight those inhibitions. My father once asked me a question. He says to me, Khalifa, what's the purpose of going into a business meeting? I thought it was a trick question. I said, to do business. Does anybody want to guess? An answer? Go ahead. Shout it out loud. To make friends. To make friends. Someone else? Sorry? Eat? <laughs> I'm pretty hungry right now. I could go for, a, go for a burger. It is to walk out with a new friend. That's the only purpose of a meeting. Forget about business. Because what my dad says to me, it's easy to convince someone to lend you a real. But the challenge is, how do you get them to lend you their heart? Always remember that. This is a quote by my baby sister. I was one time laying down on the sofa. I think I was 15 years old. I was watching Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And she walks up to me and she gives me a glass of water. I said, I didn't ask for a glass of water. She said, yeah, I know, but you look thirsty. 
I said, how do you know I look thirsty? I'm just watching TV. I'm laying down on the sofa. She says, I don't know, but it's nice to be nice. You learn from all different people and all different backgrounds, all different ages. And it's true, you don't need a reason to be a good person. Now, I'm standing here on stage in front of all of you people talking about some of my experiences. But I'm actually a shy guy. <laughs> Everything that I do, whether I'm on, in, you know, on television or if I'm on YouTube or standing on a stage, I push myself to do. I'm doing something that takes me a little bit out of my comfort zone. And it's something with practice you learn to do better. Now, because of pushing myself to do some pretty amazing things and learning how to communicate with different individuals and trying to push myself, even though people said to me, it's not going to work, I get to do really cool things like that. And actually, before I show you this photo, what does it mean when somebody tells you it's not going to work? It doesn't mean that it's not going to work. It means that they can't do it. And they aren't you. Now I get to do stuff like this. I get to hang out with a super amazing multicultural team from all over the world. I get invited you know, by the British, British government to go with Hamid to Edinburgh so I can go see the comedy festival. I get sent toys by Dash EXP. I get to interview Martha Stewart. It just kind of just happened when I was walking down the Corniche at the food festival. I got to do a viral video which is the world's highest iftar. I got invited by LG so I can go check out their new phone. Got to hang out with FozyTube when he passed by QTube, a space that I created to help people create cool content. I got invited to go to Prague and I got to sit in front of this wall which was all about you know, people sharing their expression. And that was all thanks to Qatar Airways just sending me there. Got to hang out with Trevor Noah. We, get to, we put together a really amazing comedy event. I get to wear really cool masks in the office and nobody can tell me what to do. Got to hang out with this guy, MKBHD, one of the biggest tech YouTubers in the world. And I get to talk in front of thousands of people and amazing people like you guys just because I pushed myself. So the question is, how do you want to be remembered? Who cares about those five million subscribers and a million likes that you get? Just do what makes you happy. And just answer one question. How are you going to change the world? Thank you very much.